Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of the build vlog. It's been uh, not too much going on with the car. I've been dealing with some personal stuff, some work stuff, traveling, haven't been around. So not a lot of stuff going on with the car. However, it's been good. It's been giving me time to collect parts. So I've been running a ton of parts. Stuff's been stacking up at the door. Uh, special thanks to Car Seb's Brian Carwin is a uh, nationally competitive, multi-time winning, awesome driver, awesome guy, awesome engineer uh, that owns Carceps. And he's been giving me some great parts recommendations, giving me some great prices and getting stuff over to me uh, ASAP. It's unbelievable how quick he's been shipping the stuff. It's great dealing with guys like that who are, uh, who are racers. He doesn't sell any low-end stuff. Everything he sells is top-notch. He engineers a lot of stuff himself. Uh, for example, sway bars that I was running on my last car, front and rear car steps, top hats I was running, car saps. Uh, I'm going to be still going with car steps stuff again uh, as much as I can. It's, it's, a, it's a quality company, racing products, designed, made by a racer, supported by a racer. So uh, I like to do my part and support him back. So thank you, Brian, for all the parts you've been shipping. Uh, the fiance is not too happy about all this stuff, but it's all right. She'll get over it. So as far as the uh, the motor is concerned, I've uh, pretty much finished wrapping up the harness. Invested tape, it looks great, uh, much better than it did with the old Honda stuff on there. One of the things though, as I got uh, a little closer to finishing up, putting this thing back on, I totally forgot that this old motor had 1500 cc DW injectors on there. And they use a different clip setup than the OEM S2000. So uh, I gotta cut these off and put some OEM SD thousand or OEM Honda connectors, they're pretty universal. So I'll get those cheap, brand new, not a big deal. Cut it up, redo the tape, get it back on the car and, and that's it. So other than that, small maintenance items on the motor, I got new spark plugs put in. Uh, obviously it's gonna have a new filter, new thermostat, all the basic, you know, low hanging fruit type stuff on here is gonna be addressed. So that's really it as far as the motor. I should be getting that thing back into the car. Uh, Hopefully this weekend if I'm home and I have time. So it's pretty much ready to go. Just waiting for a couple more things to come in and that thing should be in the car running. Uh, one thing regarding the motor, always recommend using a Honda OEM filter on here. If you notice on the side of the filter, if you ever read the filter, there's a torque spec on here. And uh, I highly recommend following the Honda torque spec. You can just get a filter attachment, stick your torque wrench in there and tighten it to the exact spec. One of the things is uh, on a track car, these things have come loose. It's fairly common, unfortunately, when they're not installed properly, they're not tightened or torqued into close to spec. So one of the things I do is I always park, paint mark it. I always check it every single session and uh, I had no issues with that. Uh, other people do. And then uh, just using the standard NGK OEM plugs that came with the card right off of my Amazon, nothing special. And I also always torque those down and I check them every couple of events. One of the other things that happens on these motors is that the uh, spark plugs will back out and goodbye motor. So it doesn't take very long to just pull those coil packs out, make sure these things are torqued down to spec and uh, ensure that you have a good long surviving engine. All right, on to the part stuff. So some of the stuff that I was waiting for has finally arrived in terms of parts. Uh, so these cars come with liquid filled motor mounts from the factory. They move around quite a bit on the racetrack. Uh, and it has rubber mounts on the transmission as well. So one of the big issues with that kind of stuff on the racetrack is that when you're going over curbs and you have to shift or jumping a curb or in a corner and the car's pulling high G-forces, the shifter is moving around. It's easy to miss a shift because of that. Uh, zing a motor, lose a motor, done. You're out of nice set 22 looking for another one on the market. And these motors are becoming scarce, so it is not a good thing to do. So... In the past, what I've done is I've just ran OEM mounts with an engine torque dampener, and that alleviated a lot of the movement on the motor. And I've used aftermarket transmission mounts to keep uh, the transmission from moving. I don't like overly stiff mounts. Uh, I don't like the harshness that's delivered from those. But for the sake of trying something different, uh, since I needed new motor mounts, the old motor had a SOS turbo kit on it that replaced the factory mounts. So I needed new ones anyway. Instead of going with what I've always gone with, I wanted to try something new. So I got some mounts I ordered from Brian at Carceps, hot sport mounts, and these things are just, and it's like a work of art. They look really great. They're nothing special in terms of what they do. It's just, it's just a little bit stiffer of a motor mount. I got the lightest durometer that they make, which is a 70A. So I'm hoping that these are not overly harsh and they do the job and I won't have to use that engine torque dampener uh, just for the sake of simplicity and having less things in the engine bay, less things to fill. So we'll see how these go. And then as far as a transmission mount is concerned, uh, 
Another piece I ordered from Carceps, a innovative 75A trans mount. It's a decent quality product. It is, unfortunately, I think it's a little bit heavier than stock, but it's significantly sturdier. There's not a lot of manufacturers I saw that are making transmission mounts for the car. So I've used this in the past. It's nothing special. It's just a decent quality piece. Bolt it on, does its job, keeps the transmission from moving. About 130 bucks. So I went with what I know works, what I've used in the past, and I went with the lightest durometer on this as well, which is 75A. It's been more than enough in the past. So there's no need to add additional harshness to the car when not necessary. So that's what I'm doing to mount up the engine. So suspension wise, the fun stuff. I went again with MCS two-way non-remote uh, adjustable coilovers. So these are two-way adjustable. There's not a lot of two-way adjustable coilovers on the S2000 that are not externally reservoir. So the car has a very short shock body in the rear and most of the two-way adjustable stuff out there is all external canisters. So for the class, NASA requires you to take a massive penalty weight-wise if you're gonna be running external canisters. So it really limits your options on what's available. Fortunately, there's a great option out there. It's these MCSs. I ran them last season, they were great. Um, it's an American company, made in America, serviced in America. These guys are right at Road Atlanta. And stand-up guys, I met these guys at the track. Uh, I call them, somebody always picks up the phone. Any advice, any support, they're always there. So it's great dealing with the good American company uh, that really stands by their product. So very happy to go with these guys again. Uh, the only other option that I really saw out there was JRZs as far as two-way non-remote setups. And just because of the exceptional service I had last time with these guys, uh, I'm gonna continue giving my business and I went with another set of MCSs. And uh, as far as the JRZs versus the MCSs are concerned, one of the main driving factors is the MCS contingency. They offer a contingency for NASA, JRZ does not. So they're paying, I'd have to double check, but I believe it's $250 a weekend for first place. So that's great when it comes time to rebuild and service these parts. And uh, I won 750 bucks at nationals alone as far as contingent was concerned with MCS. So got one. another set for a pretty decent price. Uh, moving on to uh, the cooling system. So again, since I had the V-mount set up on the car, I had not too many unmodified parts as far as the cooling system was concerned. So all the hoses were cut up and things like that. So I went with uh, some Skunk 2 silicone hoses. They look nice. They look like they'll do the job. They should be a little bit sturdier than stock. This is not something you need. I needed to get new hoses anyway, so I just went with new ones. With the aftermarket, again, got these from Carceps, and they should do, should do fine. No issues. They're not gonna do anything better than the stocks did, but they should just last a little bit longer, hopefully. Uh, and then moving on further with the cooling system. I went with... Uh, Try and true setup that I always use. This is the Mishimoto oil cooler. Basic setup, nothing to write home about. It is uh, the non-thermostatic version. I went with the thermostatic last time. It's not necessary for a race car, so we're just gonna run the non-thermostat one. It works fine, nothing special. Reliable, never had any failures, never issues. So I just went with that again. Went with a Mishimoto radiator as well. Uh, again, brand new. With the uh, with the V mount setup, I didn't have any of the stock components left, uh, so I had to get either used OEM stuff or aftermarket. So I went with the aftermarket in this case. Uh, the Mishimoto radiator it works fine. It's nothing special. It's not a super high end or extremely high efficiency unit. You can get much better for the S two thousand. Mister Sideways makes a setup, and a couple other guys are making great setups. But this setup works. I've tried it. It's reliable. I have no cooling issues, so I don't need to spend two or three or four times as much money on a radiator when this product does what I need it to do and it's been reliable for me in the past. And then uh, again, since I did not have the uh, the fans, I went with some uh, Mishimoto Slimline fans here. We'll see how these works. They have mixed reviews online. I like to keep it extra room in the motor, so Slimline fans will provide a couple other inches inside the engine bay. They should work fine. I'll see how they are. If not, uh, I'll just go right back to OEM fans, which you can pick up on eBay dirt cheap. As far as the springs were concerned, on my last car, 
I ran a Hyperco setup and I had those springs on three different sets of coilovers. So I started on AST 4150s and then I went with AST 5100s and then I went to MCSs. And I never changed the springs. I ran 700 pound springs up front, 650 pound springs in the back. Uh, it worked excellent on Hoosiers with some light aero, just the rear wing. No complaints. I sent the springs into a shock dyno over at RE Suspension in North Carolina to get tested. And no issues, they were perfect. So I went with Hyperco again, ordered through Brian. We uh, talked about various spring rates and sizes and everything like that. And per his recommendation, I went with 2.25 inch springs. Uh, they're the most readily available. They come in the most sizes, the most uh, uh, strengths. So this is a seven inch spring, 2.25. And I just bumped up the spring rate 50 pounds and I went with the 750 up front and a 700 in the rear as opposed to the 700, 650 setup I was running last time. I got some Hyperco helpers coming in and then uh, Brian makes a nice set of spherical top hats that are super reasonably priced. Uh, they're a fraction of the cost of what MCS charges for the spherical top hats. So again, again with Carceps, great quality products. So. No issues are expected with that. I'll do a little bit more detailed video on the suspension setup when I get that in and I can completely assemble it and put it onto the car. So we're good as far as the shocks are concerned, just waiting on a couple of parts to come in and that's really it. So a couple more parts that are coming in are gonna be the seat, a couple of safety tidbits like a fire suppression system, harnesses, uh, the cage is going in the car on December 8th. Piper Motorsports is doing the cage. They did my last cage on my Red S2000. I had a yellow S2000 prior to that a few years ago that also had a Piper Motorsports cage. Uh, Piper makes excellent cages. These guys are top, top-notch cage builders. Uh, if you go on their Facebook page, the fab work and the construction and the room they leave in the car and their finish, it's just, it's top-notch. So again, going with Piper and uh, expect nothing but great things for them as always. And they're super quick. I expect to get my car back in a week or less when I drop it off there. Uh, there'll be some cool stuff going on with the cage, like I'm doing a center jacking point along the whole entire side of the car. So I can basically stick a jack stand anywhere and just get the thing up. Uh, it's gonna be nice. Uh, I might do a couple of things different, but I'll do a video on the roll cage when I get to that. So that's gonna be a couple of weeks away now. And then uh, the motor should be going in the car hopefully this weekend if I have time. I'll keep you guys posted on some more parts and uh, Thanks for checking in. Uh, expect episode three in a couple of weeks or maybe after the end of the weekend when I get this motor in and running. So talk to you guys later.